Amen, amen, amen. We're grateful this evening, and we're thankful to the Lord for his blessings, for having blessed us to be able to come again and share with you from the Word. We thank God for that little tidbit of music. Jesus made it possible. So we know that all that we enjoy in this life, Jesus made it possible. All right, we're grateful. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer at this time. Eternal God, our Father, again we come and again we say thank you. Again we bless you. Again we magnify you. Again we want you to know that we love you. We adore you. We appreciate all that you do for us in our lives. We come this evening thanking you for allowing us to see another day and for how you blessed us throughout this day. Thanking you for how you blessed us in our going out and in our coming in and the various doors that we went in and out of throughout this day. The lives that we touched and went in and out of throughout this day. On the job, how you blessed us to go and to come back home safely. And we thank you that you blessed us to enter this sacred place one more time. That we might continue to give you praise and glory and that we might share with your people from your word. We ask, Lord, that you would bless us now. Look upon us in the name of Jesus, quicken our understanding as to what you would have us to know, that you might get the glory out of our lives. We thank you now. We glorify you. We ask that you look upon those that are not well in the body tonight, and those that are in their private homes, the hospital or the nursing homes, we call their name, Mother Leona Johnson. We know, Lord, you know all about her. <clears throat> Brother K.L. Henderson, uh, Sister Deaconess Brown, uh, Bertha Brown, we thank you, Lord, for her. And we, Mother Janie Mae Harden, Mother Janie Mae Harden, we ask, the Lord, that you touch her in the name of Jesus, Sister Cleaster uh, Grigley. And Lord, we ask that you would look upon the bereaved families we ask, Lord, that you look upon the Williams family, the Bass family, the Malone family. We ask that you look upon the Jones family, the Mickens family. Uh, we just, we, we, we ask, Lord, all of those that are going through at this time that have lost uh, loved ones, the Alexander family. Oh, God, we just ask that you touch, that you bless, that you help them to look to the hills in the name of Jesus and know that you are their source of comfort and their source of strength. Man, woman, boy, or girl that doesn't know you're in the pardon of their sins, we ask, Lord, that you don't let them rest content, <coughs> that you would bless them to come to realize that they need you before it's a time too late. We thank you, Lord, for those that are joining in with us. Uh, live Facebook, we, we, we ask, Lord, that you bless each and every one, that you keep them we ask the Lord that you bless it as they tune in tonight, that they will gain understanding from your word, that they might apply it to their lives, that you might get the glory out of their lives. It is in the name of Jesus we ask it all and bless us now. Again, we say in Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're grateful again uh, for this time and we ask now that you would take your Bible and... Uh, Turn with us to Psalms 37. Psalms 37. I know it has already been placed on your on your stream, but uh, on the screen uh, that of where we're coming from. But I want you to go to Psalms 37 and uh, look there, if you will, with us at beginning at verse one, and we shall read, and you can follow along with us in the name of the Lord. From the King James Version of the Bible, you'll find these words. Fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Verse 3 says, Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Verse 4 said, Delight thyself also in the Lord, 
and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord. And wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. Because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Verses 1 through 8 of uh, this passage of scripture of Psalms 37. And we want to deal with uh, or talk tonight or teach tonight from the uh, topic of steps to peace in the path, the path of life. So in the way of intro, Psalms 37 is a psalm that was written by David when he was an old man. And I want to underscore that old man. Uh, Pray the Lord according to verse 25. He addresses a problem that has plagued the people of God since the dawn of time. That problem is, why do the wicked seem to prosper while the righteous suffer? The problem is also addressed in Psalm 73 and also Psalms 49. It is also a prominent theme in the book of Job. Whether we will admit it or not, it is also a problem with which we also struggle from time to time. There is help for us in these verses here this evening. In verses 1 and 2, envy is condemned. Especially when the object of that envy is a lost person. Sometimes it does seem like the wicked prosper while the godless suffer. Yet we, are all, we always need to remember that our earthly existence is as close to hell as we are ever going to get. For the wicked, however, their few days of pleasure are short and they have no future beyond this life. In fact, the world is as close to heaven as they will ever be. Since we are told not to work when we see the wicked prosper, how are we supposed to deal with this problem? Well, in verse 3 through 8, the psalmist offer us an alternative to worry. There are some simple steps offered here that if followed will enable us to find peace even during the most trying times of our lives. And notice with me these steps to peace in the path of life. Well, <clears throat> if you will, verse 1 points out to us fret not thyself and I, and I know it, 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 it seems kind of uh, 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 it seems kind of uh, nitpicky and I'm not trying to deal with haters I'm not trying to deal with uh, people that seem to always got uh, their their tongue on you, or anything of that nature. I, I'm 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 not trying to deal in the negativity. I'm trying to get us to understand that uh, uh, even though we are saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, on our way to meet the soon coming King, and all of that, there are still some things in this life that we come up against that in this flesh 
it does bother us. It does bother us. And, and, and I want you to understand that we are, we are dealing with steps of peace in the path, P-A-T-H-S, paths of life, various paths, you know, like the little alley, the little street, paths of life. All right. Fret not. Don't, don't get all of, out, of, out of sync. Don't get all uh, uh, what, what, what I want to use. Don't get all turbulent and, 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 and get all going like a storm is raging in your life. Fret not thyself because of evil doers. Don't get don't 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 get caught up with those that don't know the Lord with those that are doing things their way and ain't stunned by the Lord. It, it, it ain't for you to worry about that. It ain't for you to get caught up in that. That's why he said, fret not thyself because of evil do. Then he said, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Stop sitting back here envying what somebody else is doing that don't even know the Lord. That ain't even your concern. That's not even for you to worry about. Praise the Lord. Because at the end of the day, you got somebody on your side greater than who they got on their side. Because they said that, that look, don't be envious, uh, need to be thy envious against the workers of iniquity. But, but verse 2 gives you, gives you some insight. He wants you to understand. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green earth. Any of us know that when you cut that grass, when you cut down whatever it is, it has no attachment to anything that is alive. It just lays over there and it wastes. It has no attachment. So he wants us to understand, praise the Lord, that we are not to get ourselves so worked up. Now verse 3, as I, as I hurry along, because I, I promised myself, that we are not going to be as long as we were last Thursday. I, I, I think I got a little carried away and went to really going with it, but we're going we gonna to go as far as the Lord will allow us to go tonight, but hopefully that won't be too long. All right. Verse 3 tells us that there's some things we, we that there's something we got to do. Praise the Lord. Verse 3 encourages you to control your walk. Control your walk. Praise the Lord. Verse 3 says, Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. The emphasis of this verse is for the believer to live a life that is pleasing to the Lord. When this is accomplished, the results will be the Lord's smile upon your life, the Lord smiling on your life, the Lord being pleased with your life. <clears throat> First, you, you, and, and, and under this, look, look, control your life. Look, there's a command that's being the psalmist issues two, a twofold command in this verse. First, he said, trust God. Hello. That is, walk by faith and not by sight. I don't see it. I don't understand it. But it really ain't for you. To, when, you when you're walking by faith, it ain't for you to see it. It's just for you to step on out there and go. Go for it. Mm. Yeah. Just get to moving. Just trust God. Walk by faith. We must remember that things are never as they appear to our human vision. Even when things look like they're going totally wrong in our lives, God is still working out his eternal purposes in us. Praise the Lord. Therefore, we must learn to trust the Lord in all of life. In every area of our lives, we've got to trust him. Praise the Lord. We've got to trust him. We've got to trust him. We can't trust him enough. Hallelujah. We can't trust him enough. You, 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 as I said to us, 
uh, in time past, I, I think I said this the other Sunday, sometimes we'll trust the doctor quicker than we'll trust the Lord. The doctor tell us, don't do this, oh, child, I can't do that. The doctor told me not to do it. The Lord told us some things not to do. He telling us right now, don't fret yourself because of, uh, look, fret not thyself because of evil do it. He telling us don't be envious against the workers of iniquity. But we'll sit around here and worry, oh, why? Look at that. Uh, no, he telling us don't get out of whack, don't get all worried about that because it ain't all that it seems. Most times, folk who look like they, they, they who, who don't know the Lord, look like they're prospering, look like they're doing good. On the outside, it looks good, but on the inside, they're trying to figure out how they can get more, how they can keep what they got. They're worried about losing what they got. They're worried about how folk going to think about them, how they're going to look. But here, when you trust the Lord, he gives you a calmness in this life. When you trust him. Romans 8, 28, and we've heard that quite a bit here lately, tells us, for we know that all things, huh, all things, all things, not some things, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord to those that are the call according to to his purpose. You got to remember God's purpose is going to be worked out in the life of the believer. So whatever is happening is happening for you to learn and is happening to be a stepping stone is happening to get you in place so that you can be blessed and then turn around and be a blessing to somebody else. But you can't be blessed when you threaten about somebody else that's insignificant. The most significant person you need to worry about and to think about in your life as a believer is the Lord. Yes, your family is significant. Your spouse is significant. Your children are significant. Yeah, if you're not married, but you got somebody in your life that is your companion, your, your boo, your friend, whatever you want to call them, all that there, then yes, they are significant. But none, none, none of them, none of them, husband, wife, children, significant other, uh, uh, sweetheart, uh, 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 honey bunch, whatever the name, sugar, 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 sugar lump, and all these other names you give them and call them and everything, none of those persons should overtake the position of the Lord in your life. Because at the end of the day, they can't do for you what God can do. Hello, please just hold in there. So he said, for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord to those that are called according to his purpose. So when this life starts dealing me some unfair blows, when I'm going down that path and look like this path is rocky and bumpy and, and, and it's causing me to, 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 to have to make some steps and have to slow my process down, and, and, and make those steps that are a little more sensitive and, uh, and, and, and I'm being careful about what I say. I'm being careful about what I do. I'm being careful about how I react because my, uh, I'm being careful about my attitude about this situation because your attitude determines your outcome, praise the Lord, and, and everything. But as I'm going through it, the reason I'm doing that is because I'm waiting on the Lord. I'm, I'm, I'm trusting him. I'm allowing him to work <clears throat> in my life. I don't see it. I don't know what's the best way for me to go. You don't know it, but he's guiding you. You don't know it, but he's protecting you. You don't know it. You don't understand it sometimes, but you got to know who got you. Hello. You got to know who got you. Hmm. You got to know who got you? Not just got your back, but got you. See, because sometimes you think some folk got your back. I, I remember I was watching, I was watching a movie, and uh, 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 that comes to my mind right now. 
and the professor owned the movie, I think it was Jurassic, one of them Jurassic Park movies. Uh, and I was watching, and, and, and the man who was supposed to be an expert on those animals and all that kind of stuff, he come up on one of these big animals, and he told everybody, don't move a muscle. Everybody was behind him. And he's standing there and he's saying, don't move a muscle. Stay completely still. They can't see you if, if you remain motionless. Or something like that he was saying to them. And them people, th those that were with him, they ain't heard nothing he said. They turned and went running. He happened to look behind him and all of them was gone. Guess what he did? You think he stayed right there? No, he got to moving right along with them. Because at the end of the day, they didn't trust his instinct. They didn't trust what he was telling them. They trusted that their, what their mind was telling them to do and their mind told them, run. So they went to running. Then the next thing you know, that big animal was running behind them, going after them. All I'm saying to you is, when the Lord tells you be still, be still. When the Lord speaks, because Romans says to us, for we know all things work together. It looks like the enemy is about to come down on us and crush us and he said be still don't move praise the Lord and sometimes God Almighty sometimes if you don't listen if you stay still where it looks like the enemy is about to crush you if you stay still he actually about to hit another spot where you are, you're not even at and miss you all together but sometimes if you don't listen You'll move right in the area that the enemy will crush you. God Almighty. Trust the Lord. You got to trust God. We got to trust him in every area of your life. If you don't mind, just tell yourself, self, I've got to trust God in every area of your life. For, 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 for the rest of this week, the rest of this week and over in the next week, when things go to going in a manner that don't seem so right, remind yourself, I got to trust God in every area of my life. I got to trust God in every area. I got to trust the Lord Jesus in every area of, your, of my life, in every area of my life, the good, the bad, what I see, what I don't see. I got to trust the Lord in every area. Of, I can't stress that enough. Trust him in every area of your life. Hallelujah. There are times when God's way is difficult to figure out. And it's really not our business to try to figure it out. During those times when you cannot trace God, learn to trust him anyway. And remember, the just shall live by faith. Hmm. The life of faith is the only way to please the Lord. Remember, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And then the scripture also reminds us, without faith, it is impossible to please him. Without trusting him, it's impossible to please him. Without trusting him, if you got, just got to go on it, I ain't going to trust. I'm going to do it myself. Praise the Lord. Well, guess what? You're not going to come out on victory side in the Lord. Mm -mm. Praise the Lord. And whatever side you come out on and whatever comes up, you're going to have to deal with it because you're the one did it. Praise the Lord. So I want you to understand very clearly, glory to God, just hold yourself in there. Just hold yourself in there. And understand very clearly what the Lord, he, look, 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 look. He says, look, he wants us to understand, first of all, he wants us to understand to trust God. Then he wants us to understand, praise the Lord, he wants us to understand, do good. Huh? What, what, huh? Do trust in the Lord and do good. Do good. Do good. This is a command to holy living. God expects his people to live a life that is honoring his to, that is honoring to his name. If God's people could ever learn that God is pleased when we live for him, we would see him bless us in great ways. 
The formula for success in the Christian life is found in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. And that verse tells us, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. <laughs> Glory to God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all, whew, that encompasses everything. All these things will be added unto you when you seek him first. Seek him first. Mm. It is as simple as trusting in the Lord and living for him. Do good. Keep living holy. Keep living right. Keep keeping the word of God. Keep holding to what you know from his word that you're supposed to be doing as a believer. Don't let nothing get you off the right track. Don't let nothing deter you from doing what is pleasing in the eyesight of God. Steps to peace in the path of life. This path, trust the Lord. This path, do good. As you go down the paths of life, as you go down that alley, as you go down that street, life takes you this way, life takes you that way. As you go down those various ways, remember, I'm going to trust the Lord and I'm going to continue to live for him regardless of what may be coming my way. And then look at what he tells you. He said, and so shall thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Hmm. Look, trust him, do good, and then he wants us to understand that there's a comfort that comes when we do this. When we do his will, when we do the will of the Lord, when we keep doing it, look, 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 look. Uh, the scripture tells us, um, they that wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord. Now, I want you to, I want you to take this now and just flip this script for just a minute. You go in a restaurant. You sit down. The person that, the, if they got a person at the door as you come in and that greets you, uh, good evening or good, good afternoon or uh, 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 good morning. If it's in the morning that you're going in the restaurant, Where, whatever time it is that you're going, they got the person there and the person greets you. And uh, hey, how many, uh, how many? And you tell them it's three, it's four, it's five, however many. And they, they, they say, okay, just to get the menus and everything and then they tell you right this way well that's the person that's greeting you but then when you get to the table the person that's greeting you seats you and hands everybody their menu and once that person that greeted you has seated you and have handed you your menu that person that greeted you goes that person, most times that person that greeted you going on about their business because there's somebody else coming that's going to go further than what the person that greeted you. Now, the person that's coming that's going to, that's coming that's going to go further than the person that greeted you and seated you is the person is either called a waiter or a waitress. If it's a lady, it's a waitress. If it's a waiter, if it's a male, it's, he's a waiter. All right? Now, they come, that person comes. If it's a male, he comes. Walks up to the table. Good afternoon. How are you doing? He's trying to be pleasant. He's trying to make sure that your experience at that restaurant is a good one. He's a waiter. He's waiting on you. He's taking care of you. He's going to see to it to the best of his ability. Or if it's a waitress, she's going to see to it 
to the best of her ability if they truly want things to be right for you they're going to see to it to the best of their ability that everything possible within their grasp to make your experience a pleasant one at that restaurant they're going to do it now you they what can i get what would you like to drink at this time you tell them water you tell them whatever you look on the menu and you see what they got and you tell them whatever okay we ain't going we ain't going with no wine we ain't going with none of that there we believe of now so we're going to stick with the soda we're going to stick with the coffee the tea the juice and and water all right amen praise the lord now we go in there and we get seated and they ask us for our drink what we want to drink and they thank you and they leave while they are gone you're yet doing what waiting you're waiting on the waiter you're waiting on the waitress that's serving you to provide you with what you have asked for hmm you're waiting God Almighty, I hope you're walking with me. You're waiting. You're waiting patiently. You're sitting there. Pray the Lord. In your chair. With your group. Talking and laughing. Waiting. And normally, sometimes, we get the kind of waiter or the kind of waitress that goes right over, does what's necessary, get our drinks, and bring them back to us. Sometimes we get a person who goes and gets to doing something else and takes a little more time and we become restless because we want that drink. Some of us are, are, are thirsty. We need something to quench our thirst. Praise the Lord. We've been waiting for a while. So we get to that point to where we want them to hurry up and come on with it. But even though we want them to hurry up and come on with it, guess what you keep doing? Waiting. On a human person, you keep waiting. Praise the Lord. On a human person, you sitting there waiting for them. Excuse me. Sister, you'll get me. Paper. <clears throat> you keep waiting. Glory to God. Y'all excuse me. I'm starting to sweat. I forgot to get me a towel. Praise the Lord. But on the flip side of that, you wait on that human person. You're waiting on that human person. You're waiting on them to bring you your drink. And then at some point in time, guess what? If they continue to take a long time, most of us will pull another waiter or another waitress and say, can you find out what's taking our waiter or our waitress so long to bring our drinks or something of that nature? Uh, or what's going on? Uh, or, or we'll just complain and all of that. And, and we'll, we'll find ourselves, we'll find ourselves falling into the grasp or into the place of complaining while we're waiting. And what the Lord is saying, when you trusting him, you don't need to be complaining while you're waiting. You just need to wait. Because his time is not your time. His ways are not your ways. His thoughts are not your thoughts. He don't move at your speed. He moves at his own speed. He moves at his own way of dealing with it. He, he, he don't move according to what you think it ought to be. He moves according to what he knows is the best. Praise the Lord. But you guess what? You keep on waiting. Because you're with your group. Finally, they come with the drink. Finally, you make your order. Finally, your food comes. Things get better. Praise the Lord. And when you know anything, you're walking out of there happy. You're walking out of there all giggly and everything and pleased because things was, was good. Especially if that waiter went and got those drinks right away, came back, and then got your order, turned that order in, and then in the kitchen, you got to remember, we get mad with the waiter or the waitress when the waiter or the waitress ain't cooking the food. They're only putting in, taking our order, putting in the order, and then they're waiting on the person in the kitchen to prepare the food. Now, if the person in the kitchen is overwhelmed, praise the Lord, then you got to wait. Unless you just get to that point where you're going to get up and walk out. 
But all I'm trying to get you to understand is wait on the Lord. It said they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, renew their strength. When we sit down and eat that food, we renew ourselves. When we drink that water or drink that drink, it refreshes us. It, it builds us up. It gets us to that point. Praise the Lord. And that's all the Lord wants us to understand. If you wait on me, he said, if you, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Mount up with wings of eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Wait on the Lord. And then he said, when we do his will, he'll take care of us. How well David knew this. He was an old man who had seen the Lord allow him who had seen the Lord allow him to sit on his enemy's throne. He knew that serving God always paid off. And my mother had a saying that serving the Lord will pay off after a while. Praise the Lord. And then she would also say it pays to serve Jesus. Yes, Lord. Praise his holy name. So the whole point here is this. If you will walk with your faith in God and will live your life to please him, he will commit himself to taking care of you. Hmm. I believe it's Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 19, I believe it is, that says something to us that I want to point out to us by the grace of God. Praise his holy name. If Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19 says this, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Everything he'll supply. Well, the next thing I want to point out to you is condition your will. According to verse 4. Let me go back here to Psalms 37 and look here at verse 4. Condition your will. Look at what he said. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he will give thee the desires of thine heart. The command here is delight yourself in the Lord. This word means to take exquisite delight in the Lord. When life goes bad, we tend to focus on the problem that arise around us. When this happens, we become defeated and depressed and fall into sadness. However, at all times of life, we are challenged to let the Lord be the focus of our attention. If we can focus on who he is to us, what he has done for us, praise the Lord. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's Ephesians 1, 3, where he is taking us and how much he loves us even the darkest days can be endured because we know something better awaits us down the road for we know all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord to those that are called according to his purpose. at the end of the day it's going to work out for my good you got to hold to that you got to delight yourself in the Lord you got to keep living for him. You got to keep giving him praise and glory. You got to keep magnifying his name. You got to keep on going. In spite of how bad it looks, just keep on doing it. Keep on loving the Lord. Keep on serving the Lord. Delight yourself in him. And then he said, he'll give you the desire of your heart. He'll comfort you. When we are lost, when we are lost in him, then our will and our desires will be lost in him as well. When this happens, he will lift us out of our sadness and fill us with his glory. By the way, I think the latter portion of that verse is a promise. We can claim when the Lord is our delight. <laughs> when the Lord is our delight. When the Lord is your delight. We will only want the things which bring him glory and which please him. When we arrive at that place, God will open the windows of heaven and give us every desire of our hearts. Hallelujah. Verse 5 and 6 says this to us, and I'm trying to move on because I said promised I wouldn't hold you too long. Verse 5 and 6 says this. 
commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. So he says to us, look, commit your way. The command here is commit hmm. your way to the Lord. This word means to roll on to. Hmm. The idea here is we are, we are, we are to roll. We are here is roll the burdens of life. Roll the problems of life. Roll the situations of life that come our way. Roll them right on to the Lord. Hmm. All right. Okay. Uh, financial problem? I'm going to roll it right on. There, you, there the Lord. Go right on over there. He's going to handle it. Sickness? I'm going to roll it right to the Lord. He's going to handle it. Even though I'm feeling bad, I'm trusting him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm giving it to him. Glory to God. L look, look, look. I, I, let, let me share this experience with you right quick. I left here. This has been some years ago. I left here going to a convention that we had down in Lakeland, Florida, praise the Lord. And uh, I got down there, got checked in the hotel, everything. And uh, uh, one of the days that week, I was on slated to preach. And the church family came down, the choir came and sung and all like that. And uh, praise the Lord, even, I can even remember uh, Mother, Mother Leela Fields. And, and she, she really didn't, when I come along, she wasn't doing no singing in the choir. But she got up there with the choir to sing at that time. And I said, mm, Mother Field got up here to sing with the choir. Praise the Lord. That's somebody falling right on in place to help out where help is needed. Praise the Lord. And so uh, I preached. Uh, the, we, the church family went and got a bite to eat afterwards. And then everybody went on back home. I stayed down there. But the next day I took sick. And I was in such a bad way that I left out of the sanctuary and I went to my vehicle. And at that time I had a, a, a van. And, 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 and to keep me from knowing that I was not falling, this is just how bad it was with me, keep me from knowing that I wasn't falling, I, I, I got in the back part of the van and got down on the floor of the van. Well, there was a pastor friend of mine that was looking for me and he had asked different ones, have you seen Pastor Wilson, you seen... Reverend, and, and, and they said the last time I, we saw him, he was out by his vehicle. And he came over by the vehicle and looked over in there, and he saw me in there on the floor, and he kept knocking and banging until I finally opened the door. And when I opened the door, he said, what's going on? I told him I didn't feel good. He got in there, asked me for the key, took me to Lakeland Regional. They wound up keeping me. All of that was going on. And everything, and 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 they did the uh, what what the, the thing that, that that you do with the heart, the the echo echocardiogram, and all this kind of stuff and everything. Well, they said it was blockage. Praise the Lord, and that they were gonna have to do what they call a heart cast. Well, they brought me the paper for me to sign for them to go forth with this procedure. And as I read the paper, and I looked down there and I'm getting ready to sign, and it said that while this procedure is going on, you could have a heart attack in the midst of this procedure. Fear, God Almighty, I got scared. I put the paper down, I put the pen down, and I, 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 I oh, I, I, I Fear got me. I'm going to be honest with you. Fear got me. I was scared of I don't know why. Oh, Lord. A uh, uh, heart attack? Well, like maybe I don't need to let them do this procedure. But I don't want to have no heart attack while I'm in this procedure and everything. But the Lord fixed it. That the person that was in the bed next to me, that they were discharged. A few minutes later, all of the People that was working over there getting everything clear for somebody else to come get that bed. Whenever that time came, they cleared out. Everybody, family, uh, 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 my, my wife at that time, at that time I was married, praise the Lord, she cleared out the room. And when she cleared out the room, 
I heard, the, I heard it just as clear. I heard the voice speak to me just as clear. Now this is your time with the Lord. And I talked to him. And when I got finished talking with him, he told me just like this. He said, I promised that I would never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Even in this, I'm with you. Trust me. Hallelujah. A peace came over me. I signed the paper. I went on. I said, all right, let's do the procedure. They took me on in sometime later to do that procedure and everything. And when, when it was all said and done, they woke me up. And uh, I, the doctor said, Mr. Wilson, Mr. Wilson. I said, yes, sir. He said, uh, we're done. And I said, uh, and? And he said, uh, we, we, we couldn't find no blockage. The Lord performed the procedure. They didn't even get to do what they were going to do with the hard calf, with putting the stent or whatever in. They didn't get to do none of that. They had to go on and just left it, leave it alone because there was no blockage. It was gone. When you trust the Lord, he'll take care of you. But look, I, the human side of us will push us to, to fear, but we got to quickly remember whose we are. And we got to remember he promised he'll be with us. So he said, commit your ways to the Lord. This means just roll, whatever it is, roll it to the Lord. The Lord, uh, look, look, the Lord has not asked his children to carry the burdens of life alone. He tells us to bring them to him. Praise the Lord. According to Matthew eleven twenty eight, First 1 Peter 5 and 7, you can read those verses in your spare time. We do not have to bear the heavy burdens of life all by ourselves. We have a God who cares uh, and commands us to bring or to roll our burdens right to him. In the middle of the storms of life, let us learn the truth that we are not in them alone. We are to commit our ways to the Lord, trust him to take care of us. This was the resolve of Job when he, when, amen, when he was called upon to suffer. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though I'm being come against by the enemy, I'm going to trust the Lord. Praise his holy name. <clears throat> so let us also be, let, let, let this also be the resolve in our heart this evening. That whatever comes my way, I'm going to trust the Lord. Well, he wants us to understand, amen, that we are to cons consecrate, consecrate, consecrate your way. We are told in this verse, verse 7, let me go to verse 7. He said, rest in the Lord. Mm, God Almighty. Rest in the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently. Praise his holy name. Well, uh, uh, just, just, just before I get to that, I got to point this out. The whole emphasis here uh, of, of verse 5 and 6, the whole emphasis here is that when we are walking in faith, placing our burden on the Lord, he will take care of us. We may not like the way we are called upon to trod, but in the end, the faith of the child of God will be vindicated. Friends, God is never hurried by our worry. He does not get excited when we struggle against the situation we find ourselves in. What he is looking for is faith, obedience, yieldness in the midst of the struggles of life. His promise to us is that our faith will never be in vain. Then he says, consecrate your way. According to verse 7, rest in the Lord, wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Consecrate your way. Praise the Lord. We are told in this verse to rest in the Lord and wait for him. Lord, help me to finish this. The word rest means to be silent. Then we are told not to fret. This word means to blaze, to get hot. <clears throat> it carries the idea of getting ourselves worked up into a rage over the condition of the world or over the valleys we have to walk through. Our duty during the difficult days of life is to be patient and silent 
while the Lord works out his purpose in our life. Lord, help me to hold my peace and to be patient. Help me to learn how to be patient. Lord, don't let me say help. Don't let me say to the Lord, Lord, help me to be patient. Lord, I'm going to learn to wait on you. Because when you say to the Lord, help me to be patient, hold on. Because you just told the Lord, send on the tribulation. Because the Bible says tribulation worketh patience. So watch what you say. Words have meaning. Words carry weight. Watch what you say to the Lord. Because he's good at taking you at your word. Hallelujah. So look, he wants us to be to, wait, to be patient and to be silent and to just wait and watch what he does. Just watch him as he works out everything in our life. This, 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 look, look, some folk are going to tell you, hey, this is not easy. But this kind of attitude was molded for us by the Lord Jesus himself or modeled, excuse me, modeled for us by the Lord Jesus. When he was abused, mocked, crucified, etc., he did not respond. But he endured this affliction uh, in yielding silence. <clears throat> Isaiah 53, 7 said he was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shears is dumb. Look at what it says. So he opened not his mouth. Therefore, regardless of the burdens you are called to bear, learn not to whine. Learn not to complain. Learn not to play the pity party, but to bear it for the glory of God, waiting patiently on him to work out his will in your life. This isn't easy, but it is an attitude that God can bless and use for his glory. Praise the Lord. Well, Verse 8, and I'm closing. Conquer your wrath. We are commanded here. Verse 8 says, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. We are commanded here to refrain from anger. Don't get all in a rage and get angry and I'm going to go down this. I'm going to do it. It is easy to get bitter at God, at the church, your friend, your family, when the problems of life mount up against us, it's easy to get bitter. But when we see the wicked live their lives of ease while we walk through the deep, dark valley, there's a tendency to become angry with the Lord. However, be careful that we do not abandon righteousness for the evil in the day of our affliction. Don't allow what's happening to overtake you and to start getting in a position to question or to go at God or to fall out with God. Hold on to the fact that the Lord is working it out. Huh? Joe, again, Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. He said, of all the days of my appointed time, he said, I'm going to wait till my change Come. In other words, Job is saying, it ain't going to be this way always. It's going to get better. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. God's will for us is that we stay the course. There will be an end to our struggle down the line. But for the moment, we are to abide in the will of the Lord faithfully and allow him to have his will in us. I doubt any of us will ever suffer like Paul did for the glory of God. Yet when he reached the end of his life, he was able to say that he had fought a good fight. He had finished his course. He had kept the faith according to 2 Timothy 4, 7. I want to be able to say the same thing. How about you? Hmm. If so, learn not to be angry with the learn, Lord. Learn that righteousness does pay off in the end. Just consider verses 9 through 11 of this here chapter. 
Read them for yourself. Verses 9 through 11. We, we, we're not going to go that way now. God is working in you to develop his image more perfectly. Remember, and I can't stress this enough. Remember, we as believers mirror to the world what the Lord is all about. The non-believer will read us before the, before the non-believer will ever pick up the Holy Writ. The non-believer watching us because we say we know the Lord. So, remember, he's working in you to develop his image more perfectly for you to image to the world what he's about. Sometimes, this requires him to put pressure in our lives. Never give up. Rather, give in to him and he will see you through. Steps to peace in the path of life. All of this sound difficult. Mm. It sounds like we are just to lay back and allow life to take us where it will. However, the truth is that the command in these verses are a call to action. Trust, delight, commit, rest, cease. God is calling us to take control of ourselves as we yield to him. He's calling us to be involved in the process. You see, I may not can control what happens in my life, but I can't control how I respond to what happens. I am the master of what I do in these areas of life. Let us determine this evening that we will seek the Lord's way through the valley and that we will take these five precious steps to peace in the path of life. Praise his name. Thank you, Jesus. We thank the Lord for blessing us to share with you tonight. Thank God for you joining us. Please join us on Sunday morning for morning worship by the grace of God. And as we continue to give him praise and glory and share with you from the word. Uh, Deacon Brown will be on. Deacon Ernest Brown will be on uh, at the 945 time to uh, bring forth Sunday school lesson, the Sunday school lesson. And you're welcome to join him. Praise the Lord. And then at 11, by the grace of God, we will begin our worship service and we will go forth giving God praise and glory and, and giving a word. And then uh, we will uh, just keep it moving. We're going to keep it moving. We're going to keep it moving. We're going to keep reaching out there trying to make sure you get the word so that you can allow God to get the glory out of your life. Again, we love you. Again, we bless you. Let's keep Mother Leona Johnson in our prayers. We spoke with our daughter on yesterday. She's not doing the best, but we know that God is able. And let's keep uh, uh, Brother K.L. Henderson in our prayers. I understand that uh, she's in the hospital in Altamount. So let's keep him in our prayers. Uh, and uh, let's, let's keep all of those that are on our sick and shut-in list uh, in our prayers. Mother Janie May Harden. Um, and I know Sister Clea Grigley had been, not been doing the, the best, but we know God is able. Uh, let's keep uh, Deaconess uh, Bert Brown, Bert Brown in our prayers. Uh, let's keep um, all of the families that you know of that are going through times of bereavement and the families that we know of, we'll keep them in prayer in the name of the Lord because it is never easy to lose a loved one, but we know God is able. And let's continue to pray uh, for, the, for, 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 for our, our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Let's continue to pray for them. You know, you can't hurt yourself by praying for somebody else. You know, we're to be there. We're to care. We're, we're, we're to feel one another's care in the name of the Lord. Let's do that in the name of the Lord. Let's bow. Eternal God, again we say thank you and again we bless you. Again we glorify you. Again we give you praise. We ask the Lord that all the names that have been called, even the names that we failed to call, you know all about who's going through what, what is happening with who. And we ask, Lord, that you bless in a mighty way, that you touch in a mighty way, that you deliver, that you heal in a mighty way, that you comfort in a mighty way. We thank you now. We glorify you that that man, woman, boy, or girl will come to know you. And Father, we thank you for your word. 
And we thank you that your word will not go out and come back void, but it will accomplish that which it is sent out to do. We stand firm on your word. We hold fast to what your word said. We thank you for reminding us that we are to depend on you, that life may throw us some some curveballs, it may throw us some blows, it may throw us in some areas that we really don't want to do, but in the midst of it all, we're to trust you, we're to delight ourselves in you, we're to give you the praise, and God, you will see us through, and we thank you for it. We thank you for it. We thank you for it, and not allow the enemy to overtake us, to call us to respond to you in a negative manner, but call, Lord, through the power of the Holy Ghost, that we can respond to you in a positive manner and watch you work everything out. We say thank you, we bless you, we glorify you. In the name of Jesus, and now may the peace of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of you, now and forever. In the name of Jesus, we ask it all. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you is our prayer. We love you in Jesus' name.